In this video, I will be going over step-by-step -step how to disassemble and inspect valve clearances for your motorcycle. For this project, I will be using my Kawasaki Vulcan 900. You won't need much, just a set of Allen wrenches, a basic socket set with extension, basic screwdrivers, and a feeler gauge set. If you do need to replace a valve shim, you may also need a magnet on a stick. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and remove the gas tank and the seat and various other covers. So let's jump in on getting that gas tank removed. Step one is remove the seat using the key. So using the key right here and pushing down right here, you should be able to pop the seat right on up and out, just like so. Next, this little Allen screw right here is just a uh, four millimeters. Should come out real easy. Just like that. And then the bezel should pop up and out. Just like so. And it's just two little, two little rubber stoppers there that pop on the pegs up here. And then you can return your uh, Allen screw to the hole so you don't lose it. Next, we're going to unplug the speedometer unit. So there's just a rubber boot right here and then a little button tab. Depress the button and kind of jiggle side to side and that'll come right on out. And then we've got our fuel. Our fuel meter is another plug right down in here. So we're gonna unplug that one as well. slid right out and then there's a fuel vent line going right in into the tank here so you can go ahead and squeeze that clip slide it on out of the way and then the vent hose will slide right off kind of took a lot of force all right so next we're going to be disconnecting the fuel line, and then one more electrical connection. So to do that, we're, to make a little more room, we're gonna go ahead and take this cover off with this uh, Phillips screw right here. And then this will slide right out, right off of three little pegs. Here, here, and here. I'll go ahead and put the screw back in. So this red clip, just get a little screwdriver under there and it should pop on up and then the whole thing will slide off of the fuel outlet valve right there. Make sure you get a paper towel or something because a little gasoline will drip out of that. Using this little screwdriver, I was able to get the red clip pried outward. So now I'm going to go ahead and try removing the valve. I'm going to get a little bit of gasoline dripping out of that. But now the clip is off, and as you can see, it pops out about halfway. Pops looks like it pops about halfway off. So we need to unplug this electrical component here, and there's a plastic tab. I'm just going to lift up with the screwdriver while sliding out on the bottom piece. So make sure you lift that plastic tab up. I was pushing down at first, and that, that did not work. And then of course we got a couple bolts here. You're gonna need a 12 millimeter socket to get these off. Careful not to get your paint. For actual removal of a tank then, you're going to want to lift up right here to break it free and then gently wiggle your tank side to side while pushing or while pulling back. Make sure there's nothing snagging. Alright, and you're free. Now there are some models of the Vulcan 900 that will have an extra vent hose that will be just underneath where the fuel filler is. 
Um, when I was removing the tank, my wire that was coming out was getting caught up on the bracket down here. So the tank felt like it was snagging on something. So you just want to make sure that you are completely free of all of your connections while you're lifting the tank out. And then of course you can put your bolts back in so you don't lose them. All right, so now that the tank is removed, we've got access to the valve covers and you're just gonna wanna uh, take off the spark plug boot and then undo the four bolts that keep the chrome cover on. That should be a 10, 10 millimeter. I need an extension on this because I couldn't clear the side of the frame. So you might need an extension on yours as well. There's actually little washers that are underneath these bolts, so make sure to get the washers out as well. Four bolts are undone. I just need to get the spark plug boot off. Give it a little twist and lift. A long boot. Almost missed this little guy right here, this little line with a little spring clip in here. So you're just gonna wanna squeeze those two tabs and lift up on this line. It'll come right on up. And there's what it looks like. You can just slide it right on out the side. And then your plastic cover should be free to come off. Just give it a little clockwise rotation. Yeah, so clockwise and it'll come out the left side of the bike. And then we'll just try the same steps on the uh, front cylinder. Get that chrome cover off. And we'll get the airline off the front, same way. Just like that. We'll get the two bolts on the other side. So on uh, this front right side of the bike, it was actually pretty hard to access both of these. I had to take off my extension for this one. It was actually kind of tricky to get to the bolt under here and I had to um, undo, there's a clip that holds this airline mechanism underneath. That looks like this. So I had to slide this mechanism forward to get it off of this clip. And then there was one bolt up here I undid. And once I did that, once I undid that, I was able to access this with my extension on to get it off. Then of course, take off your spark plug boot and then the cover will unstick, rotate counterclockwise, I think. And come off, be careful around this radiator hose. All right, now we're ready to get the actual heads taken off. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts that you'll need to undo. Looks like there's actually some sort of uh, black gasket type rubber thing on there and it just happened to stick on there for the other two bolts that came off of there. See, there's no black there, but we'll see. All right, and if you just give it a little jiggle here to get it loose, it should come separate from the gasket there and the cover should just come right up.
to get this back valve cover off and I guess the front one too. I was able to get the front one off fine, but there's a where the spark plug boot goes in, there's this tall cylindrical shaft that will hold you up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and I'm going to try to get in there and separate this uh, inner shaft from the valve cover. Using a screwdriver, I was able to separate the cylinder that sits right in here. And then I was able to slide the valve cover off. Here's a view of that cylinder that I had to separate from the valve cover. All right, now we're gonna remove the alternator plastic cover here. And we need to do that so that way we're able to access the um, bolt that we need to turn the engine in order to get it to the position it needs to be in to check the spacing. So you'll need a five millimeter Allen wrench. A few moments later. Then you'll need a eight millimeter socket to get the cover off. We'll put the, put the screws back in. All right, and we're fully disassembled. We can now inspect them clearances after adjusting to top dead center. So underneath that cover on the left, you see a large bolt, and that is what you use to turn with a 17 millimeter socket in the counterclockwise direction until you start seeing some letters. So I have TF in there right now. And if you look up at the cam sprocket, you'll see a line engraved, and you want that line to be nice and parallel with your piston. So it is now, so I know I can check the uh, valve clearances. To check what your valve clearances should be, refer to your owner's manual. For the Vulcan 900, on page 2-11, you can see that the valve clearance spec for exhaust is between 0.2 and 0.25 millimeters, and the inlet is 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters. All right, so the valve shims actually sit right underneath. There's a shim right there. You can see when I slide the piece out of the way, that's a shim. So we're gonna go ahead and measure it. And this is the exhaust, the two exhaust valves for this cylinder because it is closer to the exhaust pipe. The intake is on the other side of um, the cam. So spec is between 0.2 and 0.3. So let's try 0.2. and it slides in pretty easily. So I'll bump up the size to the 0.23, and that's not really going in. So it's a, somewhere between 0.2 and 0.23, so that's in spec, so I don't need to change that shim. So now I'm going to check the valve that's on the right-hand side of the bike by doing the exact same thing. So I've got my 0.2, and I'm gonna slide it right on in there. And that feels pretty good. Let's go a size up. That was the 0.2 millimeter, which is in spec. So we'll try 0.23, which will still be in spec. And it goes in, but it's pretty stiff. So that's that side's also in spec. At the back of the front piston, the two valves are intake. So in spec for those is between 0.1 millimeter and 0.15, so we're gonna use the 0 0.1, 0 0.13, and possibly 0.15 to check to see if they're in spec. So the same as the, the other valves, we're gonna slide the feeler in between the shim and the rocker arm. This is 0.1, and that slides in pretty nice. Feels like it might be rubbing just a little bit. We'll try the back one. Feels pretty good as well. We'll go up a size, try 0.13. Okay, that slides in and it's definitely rubbing, definitely rubbing a little bit. Back one goes in as well, but it's rubbing even harder, so. Just for kicks and giggles, we're gonna try the 
So that goes in, but it's not wanting to slide at all. So we're gonna assume that's between 0.1 and 0.15. And it's not even sliding in the back one. So both of these are between 0.1 millimeter and 0.15. So they're in spec, no need to change any shims out on the front piston. All right, and before we check the back, we're gonna to need to go ahead and turn the engine over until we see markings, TR. You'll hear the compression fighting me a little. Okay, that really swung around quickly. I saw the TR marking. And there's the line, so we just need to turn just a little bit more. I actually over-rotated it because the, once I got past the compression, it just right around. So I just did another full revolution and the line in the cam sprocket is parallel. So we're good to check these valves. Basically, we're doing the same exact thing we did for the front piston. So I'll save you a little time and just go ahead and skip forward to one of the exhaust valves where the gap was actually not in spec. They need to be between 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters, so let's try the 0.2. And it's not going in there. Goes in that side, but it's a little tight. Let's go a size down from 0.2. Looks like I got a 0.18 and a 0.15. We'll try the 0.18. That size is also not going in there. It is going in that one. So that one's in spec, but it looks like we got one that's gonna need a different shim in it. We'll try the 0.15, which is five millimeters under spec. And that one goes in and feels pretty good actually. So. We need to get a shim in this valve that is five millimeters larger than the one that's currently in there. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to remove the existing shim. And for that, we're gonna use a magnet on a stick. So to do that, you can just pull the rocker arms forward like so and get a magnet on a stick and it'll pull the shim right on out. Easy peasy, don't have to rebuild the top end. The exhaust gap spec is between 0.2 and 0.25 millimeters of a gap. Our gap was 0.15, so we need a gap that is 0 0.05 larger to 0 0.1 larger, which means that our shim needs to be that amount smaller in order to make the gap larger. This shim has 40 stamped on it, so if I just check it in my caliper real quick, just to double check, I'd expect that it is 2.4 millimeters. And it is. So we're gonna go ahead and get a shim that is either a 2.355 or a 2.3. While you can find shim kits online, it didn't make sense for me to purchase one since I only needed to change out one shim. I ended up going to my local motorcycle repair shop where they sold me a couple shims for just two or three bucks a piece. Before picking up shims, you will want to double check the diameter for your bike. For the Vulcan 900, the diameter is 9.48 millimeters. Once you have a shim that will correct your valve clearance gap, you wanna carefully slide the rocker arm out of the way, and again using the magnet on a stick, insert the shim into place, and carefully let the rocker arm slide over top of it, and then you should be able to pull the magnet on a stick back, releasing it from the shim. Be careful as you do not want to drop the shim inside the engine. With the new valve shim installed, you'll want to once again get out your feeler gauges to make sure that the new shim now puts the valve clearance into specification. Once you verify this, then you can start reassembling your motorcycle. Putting your Vulcan back together is as easy as doing the disassembly steps in reverse, but you will want to make sure that you tighten down the valve cover bolts to a specific torque rating, which can be found in the service manual. Well, that's all I got for you. Best of luck and safe riding.